Hello everybody, it is your friendly neighbourhood floating head coming at you for a 2020 favourite. It's 2021. I'm relieved and sad all at the same time. But yeah, first day back after Christmas break, I have no idea what I'm doing. So I've actually forgotten how to speak to the camera and can literally do about five words at a time. It's going well going well. Today I'm going to talk you through my 2020 makeup favourites. I'm also going to do 2020 like fashion related. I haven't really, I haven't thought of the title of it yet. So I'm going to have something that is fashion related for 2020 and basically round up 2020 in that sense that will be coming up. But today I wanted to do my 2020 makeup and skincare favorites. Makeup, skincare, fragrance, hair care. If any of those sound like they're your bag, then keep on watching. 2020 for me, how many times can I say 2020 in this video? It was all about coverage and skincare, really. I actually ended up like taking a lot of products out, trying to figure out if my skin concerns were product related. Spoiler, they were not. But over the course of the year, I got very, very good at covering spots because it was no longer just the whack a little bit of concealer on and you're all good kind of vibe. I actually have done a high coverage makeup tutorial if you want to go and watch it. And this was basically the star of the show for my entire year, but also for that video. This is the Kevin O'Corn Foundation Balm. I have two of these, but this is the shade medium FB06 and this is what I've used today. I have cutaways of me using it and I can use this lightly as a really light lovely like cream foundation but I can also stipple it in and build it up and the coverage of this is in incredible. It honestly changed the makeup game for me and just allowed me to feel a little bit more comfortable with what was going on on my face for the majority of 2020. I'm very thankful that right now I'm just dealing with some very, for me, light scarring. Very, very light scarring. I think Santa might have brought me my Christmas wish of clear skin. It wasn't Santa actually, it's just been me figuring things out. Honestly, I would love to get to a point where I don't need to use this so much anymore, but I think I will still continue to use it even when my skin is better because it's just such a lovely foundation. I really like the finish that it gives. It's not super glowy. It's a really nice like everyday coverage if I'm doing like a no makeup makeup look this is perfect and if I want to do a really full coverage like glam look it is amazing as well moving on to concealer I had a new concealer favorite this year this is the pro filter concealer from Fenty Beauty I love this this is great I am gonna do a little test of this against the Tarte Shape Tape which was my concealer favorite of 2019 I'm gonna balls up the ears in a minute I just know it this is in the shade 270 and it has a pinky undertone so it doesn't match my skin on the most part of my face perfectly but it is amazing for counteracting my dark circles under my eyes a good tip for this one much like the Tarte Shape Tape is to actually just leave it for a couple of seconds to kind of set under your eyes before blending it in and it gives a much more like heavy coverage finish. For eyeshadow, Charlotte Tilbury really dominated my eyeshadow favourites this year. I still use the palette from my 2019 favourites all the time though. I will link my 2019 favourites because a lot of the favourites from that are still in my makeup bag and used every single day. I'm trying not to mention old things too much where possible because I don't want this video to just be the exact same. So that eyeshadow palette is still in my makeup bag. I still use it every day. I've used it to do my kind of like black and brown eyeshadow that's along my waterline today. But this one was so highly used throughout 2020. It is the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize in Rose Gold. I think I had another one of these that I used a lot in 2019, but I picked up the Rose Gold one, I think in March, literally right before lockdown down and I've loved using that so much it makes a great base go underneath eyeshadow it like holds everything really really well and if you're wearing shimmers it really makes them pop and brings them out so nicely it also looks lovely on its own as well or if you're going to apply a matte shadow over the top it just gives it this lovely luminosity so on an everyday basis I like applying it very very lightly I doubled up in the cutaways partly because I thought I was recording the first time and I wasn't but you also get to see what it looks like layered up with like two layers of it and it's beautiful but I also really enjoyed oh this one this one this month <laughs> this year this is the charlotte tilbury pillow talk luxury pop of pops so this is like pillow talk but it's all shimmers and it's just stunning i remember using this a lot at the beginning of the year i haven't used it so much lately but i've got it on my eyes today and i don't think it's leaving my makeup back down for mascara things have not changed and one of the reasons that i know like something is a favorite in my makeup bag when it comes to doing my end of year like roundups is if my makeup bag looks like the noah's ark of certain like product groups. I know that that product is a favorite, if that makes sense. So when I have two of things in my makeup bag, I just know that it is a favorite. The Bare Minerals Lash Topia Mascara is still my favorite. And I couldn't like not mention it because it is one of those products that I love so very intensely <laughs> like i'm very very passionate about this mascara so even though i mentioned it in my 2019 favorites i couldn't not mention it because i literally use it every single day 
However, notable mention to another Bare Minerals mascara, which is the Bare Minerals Strength and Length, which I have been using occasionally, and it is so very rare that I switch mascaras ever, but I have been using this occasionally for no makeup days when I just need like a light layer of mascara. This actually gives a lot of length. It's really gorgeous, and it's meant to be really good for your eyelashes and like help them, you know, stay long and fluttery, and my eyelashes need all the help they can get right now. So special mention to that, and then, bronzers like this could not be ignored i have a different bronzer favorite at the moment but i'm still using these alongside it so you know these are the fenty beauty bronzers i have the cream one in shade 5 teddy and i don't use that so much all over my face at the moment but i actually use it more around my nose to contour especially on no makeup days i still like to contour my nose so i use that pretty much every day and then we have private island which is my go-to like bronze shade i have hit pan this is a big deal people this is a big deal it's the perfect all over bronzing shade for my face and then i have the shade coco naughty which i use more as like a contour for my cheekbones for my temples it's darker so it's definitely a lot more intense so i only use it if i'm doing like full glam this is not like a no makeup makeup shade for me but when i've done like a full face of makeup i just kind of lightly yeah, sound effect needed. I also could not give a mention to the Charlotte Tilbury. Like Charlotte Tilbury, Charlotte Tilbury, Fenty Beauty, KKW Beauty are like my top three brands of 2020. I love them. And you can really see that through my makeup favorites this year. These are the Pillow Talk Beauty Light Wands. I love these so much. This is like on its way out. I'm obsessed with this. So this is Pillow Talk, just the standard Pillow Talk shade, which I put on my cheekbones. I love the way it looks. It just really makes them like come to life. And then we have the Pillow Talk Beauty Light Wand in the shade 2 Medium. And this is a really nice bronzy shade for me. It's almost very reminiscent of the by terry sunny flash cc serum thing which was in my favorites last year it would have been in my favorites this year again if i hadn't stopped using it for such a long period of time because everyone made me think that that was what was causing my breakouts which is silly because when i didn't have like crazy breakouts i'd still been using it and it was fine so i didn't really need to cut it out but i kind of did just for my soul to know in my soul that you know it wasn't that but yeah i still love that it is a great like all over like no makeup makeup day kind of product i also used it mixed in with my foundation today and i and i just love it but yeah this is very similar to that but what i do is i apply it just below where i would apply pillow talk i kind of tap it in and then bring it up onto my temples down my nose like the whole the whole shebang basically this is like a highlighter and bronzer duo for brows i've not had anything that i really loved this year so i'm gonna leave that category um blush i was so like i just used a lot of different blushes and actually now i'm just not so fussed on blushes so i just feel like it's a bit of like a yeah, though honourable mention to the Hourglass Brow Arch Sculpting Pencil and the Sculpting Gel, Sculpting Gel? Brow Gel. I'm pretty sure they were in my 2019 favourites and I have gone back to using them again, so they're good. In terms of lip products, I think KKW Beauty is just so symbolic of my 2020 makeup routine, especially the shades Nude 0.5, which is this one, and Nude 1 which is this one. I apply Nude 1 first all over my lip and then Nude 0.5 is more of a like center color. It's a slightly warmer nude and I just think it's beautiful. And then I would go over the top with the 90s Supermodel Matte Lipstick, which is just beautiful. It's like the most gorgeous corally nude pink, but not like a corally nude in the sense of like it being orangey it's like definitely pink it's just a really lovely warm pink basically it's so unique i've literally not found anything else like this from any other brand i'm hoping now that i think coty have invested a lot of money into kkw beauty i'm hoping we'll see some more like uk retailers of them because buying online and paying the customs charges is just such a ball like like i hate mentioning them i hate the fact that i love this because it is such a ball like to get your hands on if you live in the uk but honorable mention to mac stone lip liner which was my favorite i'm pretty sure in my 2019 favorites and i've also been loving mac hue a lot at the moment everyone's been asking what's on my lips and it has been mac hue so been loving that so much okay i'm gonna move on fragrance favorite it has stayed i'm pretty sure the same although my 2019 favorites i'd only been using this for a couple of months because either i just got the them or they've just been released i can't remember the all saints perfumes are incredible sunset riot is my absolute favorite and when i say <laughs> when i say there is nothing else i've ever smelt that is like this i really mean it like i say that and people will go yeah but what's it like like what other things can you compare it to i'm like i honestly hands down 
there is nothing else that I have ever smelled that is like this. And I've smelled a lot of fragrances. It is incredible. This is one of those fragrances that I smell and I think of chocolate. There's a lot of men's fragrances as well that I smell and I think of chocolate rather than blue. I hate the citrus, citrus fragrances in men's fragrance that smell like blue really kill me. It's not even a blue, it's citrus, so I shouldn't even think of the color blue. I don't know why I do. But the All Saints fragrances are actually unisex as well, so it's definitely not too sweet or too feminine. It's one of the more feminine ones that they do. They have Leather Skies, which is definitely more masculine, and Flora Mortis, I would say, is definitely more feminine. This is one that sits perfectly in the middle, and I just love it. I love it so much. It's actually now in boots, so if you can get in there and have a sniff, definitely do, and also in All Saints stores. They also do little mini sets, which I love if you were looking to like dip your toe in and give all of them a little sniff and kind of test them out on your skin. So that is my fragrance favorite. I am not at all shocked by that one because I just knew at the end of last year when I did my favorites that it would be in my favorites again this year. It's like my scent like everyone kind of like associates with me now. So I love that so much. I'm going to get on to skincare in a minute and talk about the products that really have been like wowing me in terms of skincare. But first I'm gonna give a good mention to my favorite hair care products of the year. My hair this year has been on a journey, people. <gasps> I don't want to think about it too much because I get really emotional, but my hair has been on a journey. I do not look the same as I looked at the start of this year. The start of this year, I had long blonde hair and I'd also had like a decent chop and my hair was still so broken from 2019, like so broken. I had like bits that were like, where were they? They're about here that have broken off. Now my hair is growing so quickly that it's permanently in a bun because I can't see my hairdresser at the moment. It's the healthiest it's been in a really long time. I'm very happy with how things are progressing. I do need, I need some work done to some highlights, but you know, but yeah, it's very healthy, but definitely very short compared to my usual. And it's finally recovering from the hell that I put it through in 2019, which is amazing. And because I haven't fully learned my lesson, I still do you know, keep my hair a little bit highlighted. I do like a little bit of like lightness to the ends of my hair. I just think it complements my slightly darker roots. I'm that like kind of mid-tone brown. It looks very dark when I do this side part because this never sees the sun. But anyway, considering the fact that I'm still highlighting my hair a little bit, I really wanted to make sure that I was doing the most for it and just not kind of overdoing it. I don't ever want to have to like cut that much off of my hair ever again. I don't ever want to have to wait for like broken bits to grow out ever again. And earlier this year, I actually partnered with Kerastas. They sent me these to see if I would like to work with them on an IGTV. I believe it was an IGTV. My memory is so foggy. And because of what I had been through with my hair, I was like, I need to try these. Like I need to give them a good thorough road test first and like see kind of if they're helping, if they are actually going to like hydrate my hair and give it what it needs because my hair has been through so much. I'm so fussy over the hair brands that I work with now because of that. Like the products need to do the most for my hair. I tried these, I love them. I just love them. They, number one, they smell, like the smell, the smell is incredible, uh, like the best shampoo smell I've ever smelled in my life, but they are great for kind of toning your hair, keeping it like non-brassy, but without like drying out. And honestly, it is so hard to find purple products for your hair that don't dry out. I really messed up in 2019 with the products that I was using for my hair. When I look back, I'm like, that was too drying and you were putting like the shampoo on and actually leaving it for too long because you were trying to like tone your hair too much. It was, it was a nightmare. I would never do that to my hair again. And these are so, so hydrating on my hair. I'm absolutely obsessed. So there's the Blonde Absolute Ban Ultraviolet and then you have the Ban Lumiere something Lumiere, which is in my shower at the moment and it's the like clear one. So you don't have to use the purple shampoo every single time. They have another shampoo in the range, which is just like to brighten rather than, you know, purple shampoo. And then we have the conditioner, which is the Psycho Flash. And this is both like a purple conditioner, but you can actually leave it on for like up to five minutes to like give it a really intense treatment. And honestly, my hair never feels so soft. I've been staying at Ryan's over the Christmas period a lot and just using a cheaper shampoo that I keep there. I've actually got new bottles now to put at his so that I can use it both at my house and his house because I feel the difference in my hair. I'm not doing it anymore. This needs to be 
everywhere that I go. I'm not washing my hair without this. So if you're looking for purple shampoo toning products for your blonde hair, even if it's just highlighted like a little bit, honestly, it makes the world of difference. I actually have like a before and after picture, I believe I'll pop it on screen of my hair before I started using this. My hair was very blonde because it was summer and we hadn't chopped. It was pre my second bob chop so we hadn't chopped like too much blonde out of it yet so you can really see the difference in the yellow tones in my hair honestly these are incredible but special mention they also do a mask a purple mask which is amazing as well i've run out so i don't have a bottle here i'll put a little picture on screen i love the mask it's amazing this is probably my hair product of the year i would use this still if i didn't have blonde hair i'm obsessed with it not only does it have the lovely smell that the shampoo and conditioner have. I actually did this like chat to Ryan last night because he asked me what I was putting on my hair. This is a magical, magical product, people. Number one, you can use it as an intense overnight leave-in treatment. Number two, it's a heat protectant. Number three, it's a purple product, so it helps day to day to like tone your blonde bits and you can just use it like in the day as well if you need to like smooth your hair over it has so many uses. It's like proper multi-use. If you're blonde and you're looking for a heat protectant like this this is a game changer, honestly. And it leaves my hair feeling so soft. Like I said, I've been at Ryan's and I've just been using the cheaper shampoos that I have that I keep there. I think it was the Garnier Super Foods, which I really love. Oh, the smell, bananas, mm, so good. But it doesn't have a touch on the Kerastase range. We are going to move on to skincare. Are you ready? Because I am going to talk about two products that really changed the game and were the starting point for turning my skin around. Like I get really emotional when I think about how much I love these products. I've also started using some new products, which I think we will kind of leave for another month or so before I really like show you the results. One thing that I found has been so important this year because of the state of my skin. When I talk about skincare, I really want to be able to show you guys that it does something because for someone whose skin was in the state that mine was in, I just really felt like, I was like, I just don't feel like I can talk about skincare because who is gonna like believe that this product is lovely when my face looks like it does? But yeah, I'm very fussy because of the state of my skin and how fussy I am personally, much like my hair care. I'm so fussy with my skincare and I won't just put anything on my face. Like honestly, I can't tell you how picky I am in every aspect of my life when it comes to my skincare. First up, we have the Sunday Riley UFO Ultra Clarifying Face Oil. This face oil is amazing. It's actually like for blemish prone skin, which I don't think most people that have blemish prone skin want to like use an oil. Most don't want to put it anywhere near their face, which is so understandable. But trust me when I say like, face oils when you have blemish prone skin if you get the right ones do the most for your skin honestly I think it's the only thing that stopped my face from being like it could have been so much worse in terms of the scarring really like those spots were like huge cyst spots which I was squeezing I don't do that anymore I don't do that anymore. Don't do it, just don't touch them. I know it's annoying, but don't touch them. Anyway this has salicylic acid in it which is meant to draw the stuff in your face out supposedly and I actually believe it does because you can really see in the before and after photos the blackheads on my nose I've never been able to really shift them I used to try like you know getting them out I tried everything nothing would work but this honestly you can see in the photos how much clearer my nose looks it is incredible so if I like don't wear makeup and I use this repeatedly for a week I just don't have blackheads on my nose it's incredible and it has also helped the congestion on my skin as well because I would be trying to kind of like see to the blackheads on my face and I was causing extra spots in addition to the spots that I already had it was an absolute nightmare this has like nipped those in the bud I don't get cheek blackheads anymore which is I love this so much. So it's really like doing the most in terms of like the long term for the condition of my skin because it's just stopping me kind of getting build up of stuff in my face in the first place. But when I do have spots, this, this is incredible. So this is the Sunday Riley Satin Sulfur Spot Treatment Mask. It has sulfur, niacinamide and zinc in it. Niacinamide really helps the like overall appearance of your skin. Zinc and sulfur, I'm pretty sure are good at like drawing stuff out. So it's a great all rounder. You can put it on during the day. If you're having like a no makeup day, you just leave it on until it dries. You can put it on overnight. I predominantly use this on active spots, but I do also sometimes pop it on scarring as well. Since I've changed my routine, I haven't been applying this over scarring so much, but it does work quite well over that but I would say like it's an expensive product in a very small tube so that's definitely something to be conscious of and I would predominantly advise using this just on active blemishes but it does work well on scarring as well because of the niacinamide it can be quite drying but I just put up with it for the fact that it 
really does the job on my spots and they don't hang around for half as long as they used to like i swear it half the time of blemishes on my face and this at a time when my skin was like at its worst really came along and started doing the most for me and i'm so grateful i think it might have been asos that did like a care package and sent me this and i'm so so grateful i've bought tons of backups with my own money since it is incredible and i love it i love it so much and that is actually a point i want to touch on all of these favorites except the Karastas shampoos, because I obviously started using them in August and I don't go through shampoo that quickly, have been purchased with my own money. If they were gifted to me the first time round, I have repurchased them with my own money. That is how I know something is a favorite, not just when I start to stash away duplicates, but also when I just rush out and buy something because I can't be without it. So Sunday Riley has absolutely saved my face this year. I'm so very grateful. Another one that I repurchase in bulk, even though it is so expensive, I would never, ever rave about a face mist unless I thought it was le that level good and this is that level good. Like, I have repurchased this, I think, five times. The last time, I pre-ordered three. This is the Allies of Skin Molecular Saviour Pro Probiotics Treatment Mist. This has just been reformulated. It now has 5% niacinamide in it, which I don't know if it did before or maybe it just didn't say on the front of the bottle, but I think it's been reformulated. So, it is so good. It has this like anti-evaporation complex in it. So it doesn't like a lot of the time when you mist your face, lots of people say it's actually more drying than not misting your face because the water like evaporates off your face and takes the moisture that you had in your skin with it. Don't know how true that is. I am not a scientist. So yeah, this doesn't do that. It, and, I, and it actually doesn't, it actually doesn't. It's so weird. You put it on your face and it just doesn't dry as quickly as other mists because other mists are actually just evaporating off your face. And I really find that it like locks in the hydration into your skin so much better. So I apply this all over my face after cleansing and then I apply an oil over the top. I either go in with this one or my next favorite, and I apply it over the top and it just helps to lock the mist in and it is just so hydrating. And my skin, my skin just isn't the same throughout the day without it. Like I can't be without this. It's a really expensive habit that I have now picked up. It's been one of the stars of my skincare show this year, along with the Votary face oil. This is the Super Seed facial oil. I love this. Again, this is one of the ones that has like Noah's Ark syndrome. So I have so many of these. I have one in storage as a backup for my house. I have one at Ryan's. I have one in my bathroom cupboard. I love this. This is the most beautiful face oil. I love the Sunday Riley for what it actually does deep down in my skin, you know, but this one makes my skin look so good. If I'm having a no makeup day and I just want to put a nice oil all over my face and just feel really like glowy and dewy, this is the one it is so beautiful my skin feels so good and so hydrated like it's a really nicely hydrating oil you know i also wanted to mention tan this year i discovered the saint tropez self tan purity bronzing water gel i have that in the top of my head but i still look at the bottle and i don't know why i have been through i think about five or six of these this year i love it i know i probably use way too much when i tan but i, I just don't care i've done a tanning routine using this so if you want like the full shebang all of my tips and tricks i will pop that up here somewhere yeah this has been an absolute game changer for me in terms of tanning it is just the most beautiful tan it makes my tan look so natural you can build it if you want it to be darker it builds incredibly well but it also just gives a really lovely natural glow and i just love it so that is it for my 2020 favorites i hope you guys have enjoyed this was it completely predictable let me know i'd also love to know what your makeup favorites are this year as well and also just let me know if there's any other like 2020 roundup type content that you guys want to see from me over the next week or so and i will get on that for you but yeah that is it from me i'm looking forward to a whole new year with you guys i hope you're all doing really really well and i'll see you guys again in my next video love you bye